When you're a struggling rebellion, you need to make use of everything you've got. Sometimes you even have to Frankenstein parts to make a new ship. What's up, meta-nerds? This video is all about the M-Class Starfighter. Really, this is a sort of ugly, a creation made by combining starship parts. Though instead of something like X-Wing and TIE cockpits all mashed up, all of these parts were reworked almost exclusively from Y-Wings. The reason it is called the M-Wing is because these connecting wing sections both zigzag, making an M-shape with the engines. You can see that the cockpit, which would house a pilot and co-pilot, is the same just with this extra window, and it loses a lot of the area on the sides. In the original, this space is filled mostly with systems used in the laser cannons, with things like the heatsink, coolant coils, pumps, and on the ventral side it housed the proton torpedo launchers. But you can also see how the Clone Wars era Y-Wing, the BTLB, was also more bulked out than the Rebels variant. So the M-Class just goes even further, thinning out these areas even more, which did result in a loss of torpedoes. That may sound like heresy, but the laser cannons and engines were made much more powerful, and this ship's role was changed to a long-range scout ship, no longer intended to be a bomber. Though these connecting M panels are thin, each of the three engine units are enormous, and so the M-Class nearly doubled the length of the Y-Wing, up from 23.4 meters to now being 40 meters or 131 feet. That's just about three times the length of an X-Wing, or about 20 Wookiees. If we look at the cross-section of the A4 Y-Wing used by Rebels, we can see that the bulk of the engine unit was the turbine and reactor, and so it appears that they were able to extend these sections, likely by combining the parts of two engine units, allowing for more volume and thus more thrust to be generated. Although its stats are unknown, it must have had a greater top speed than its predecessors. I'd say around 1300 kilometers per hour, or 808 miles per hour. The other half of these units are for the laser cannons, and just on its greater size, I'd imagine they could either get up into the heavy laser cannon range, or it would house a lot of the coolant and greater generators so that it could fire more rapidly. Now another thing that might make Y-Wing lovers faint is that it removes the turret and astromech. This area in the main body does not fuel a third weapon, but instead would house the Class 1 hyperdrive and built-in navigation systems used instead of the R5. And although it isn't specified, we can assume that it would have at least a similar shield to the Y-Wing, rated at 75 SPD. Because it was made for a scout role, we can also assume that there would be a good amount of long-range scanners and hyperwave transceivers, all stored in this section as well. As for its history, it's said that they were being produced from the salvaged wreckage of Y-Wing starfighters throughout the Civil War. Some were stationed at Echo Base on Hoth in the year 3 ABY, and Chewie flew one by himself while Han Solo also flew one with Leia as a co-pilot. Those two actually got caught up in a heavy Hoth blizzard, which forced a crash landing, and started to lay the foundation for a future romance. Again, this was a sort of ugly made by mashing up parts from downed ships, so as the Rebels became the New Republic, the official government of the galaxy, there was no need for the M-Class. Instead, mostly A-Wings would carry out this scout role. As for behind-the-scenes facts, it was first introduced in the comic A Valentine Story, and expanded upon in the complete Star Wars Encyclopedia. Artist Adam Kopp then made a great model of this ship, and Shogun Eagle made stats for it so that it could be used in the Star Wars role-playing D6 game. Also, the M-Class is just one of many variants of the Y-Wing, as people out of universe and characters in-universe try to make use of this awesome engine and the many abilities of this classic starfighter-slash-bomber. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support this channel without it costing you a thing, or check out our Patreon. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, recycling isn't just for the environment, it keeps rebellions alive too. And the Force will be with you, always.